Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about the bridge lock stabilizer system from Matthews. So we touched over it a little bit in a video we did about a week or two ago, um, briefly talking about this system. And now today I wanna to make a video doing a little bit better job explaining it. So this stabilizer system is honestly kind of groundbreaking for the industry um, based on what you can do with it. I really, really like stabilizers if you didn't know already. And if you didn't, now you do. Um, I'm a very big advocate for running front and back stabilizers and even just running stabilizers in general. Basically what stabilizers are there for is to take away leverage from you as the shooter and um, allow the bow to shoot better with your uh, incorrect manipulations of the bow. So when you make a shot and you, and you have a little bit more pressure in your hand, it makes the bow harder for you to move and manipulate. So that's just taking away leverage from you. Also helps the bow balance a little bit more, slows everything down. So for, for you guys that didn't know what stabilizers are there for, that's basically what it is. It's to make the bow shoot better when you don't shoot that good. So um, that's why I really like them as a target archer, um, as a hunter, um, you know, we, we are the only inconsistent thing behind the bow. So anything that can help us make a shot better when we're off, uh, off a of flat ground, you know, shooting off of a rock in a tree stand, whatever it may be, you know, when I'm shooting at a 3d course, sometimes I'm standing on a platform and shooting straight down. There's a lot of inconsistencies. So anything that will help me, um, be as consistent as I possibly can. That's what we want. Um, what's really cool about this system, for one, is it's the bridge lock, so it goes into the riser, but you can actually change the stabilizer length by half inch increments, which has not been done ever before. Um, so for guys that are very picky about <clears throat> their stabilizer length, there's some people out there that won't run longer than eight, won't run shorter than 12, you know, you can fine tune these stabilizers to exactly what you want them to be or just play with them and see what they do. So if you're a guy like me that wants to understand everything and how it works and why it works, um, I especially need to know that for my target archery, but I now have the ability to fine tune and tweak my stabilizer without having to buy another one. So these are expensive stabilizers, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to buy four different length stabilizers to figure out which ones you like. Cause you're gonna probably wanna run a back bar. And so <clears throat> you also need to know about that one too. So instead of having to buy eight sets of stabilizers to be able to try all different sizes, you now buy two to the what, what range you feel like you wanna play with. And you've got a lot of the options right there in one stabilizer. Um, you know, I really, really like just the, the versatility of these bars. So the back bar, you know, the back bar is, to, is there to counteract the weight from your stabilizer, from your sight, from anything that's kind of on this side of the bow, wanting to pull the bow this way. That's what this back bar is there for. So you can completely relax your hand and allow your bow to balance. So with a relaxed hand position creates less torque less torque, more accurate shots. So when you have your back bar figured out where you want it left and right, the up and down position will actually change the leverage off of the front. So if you have a lot of weight up front and you feel like your bow's wanting to pull you down like this, you can move this back bar angle up and with the weight of this, it'll kind of want to pitch that bow back up. So you don't get this dip anymore. You can actually balance that out. So. By having a back bar, you can really fine tune a lot of your hold, um, fine tune the balance point on your bow. It's very, very important in my eyes to have that. And by playing with these lengths, if you have, um, you know, if you're worried about having a lot of clearance, like uh, from your backpack or whatever, whatever it may be that you feel like this back bar is gonna get caught on. Some people think it's gonna get caught on bushes. I've been running a back bar for nine years and never hooked it on a bush and I've never thought man I wish I didn't have that back bar 
So I don't know about you guys, but I'm a lot bigger than this bow. I mean, I, I gotta get through that bush first, no matter what. If I don't get through that bush, the animal's not getting shot, whether I got a bow or anything. So um, <clears throat> having this back bar, the, the mount and the bridge lock system, oops, just dropped the little knob off. That's what happens Overkill. when you loosen it too much. <laughs> you can slide this back bar all the way in or have it all the way out. So you can really figure out where that works best for you. I like running my back bar a little bit longer. For one, I don't have to add as much weight to get the same effect as running a shorter bar. Um, the shorter the bar is, the more weight you have to run to take the leverage away. Again, we're playing with leverage. So, um, but then the other thing I like to do is when I'm out in the field and I'm glassing, I can put this back bar right into my hip here and put my binos right on top of the cam and use it almost like a tripod. Obviously, it's not gonna be as steady as a tripod, but it's more steady than me having my binos with one hand trying to do it. I can support this and have it stick out just past my bow so I'm not rubbing the strings in the cam with my pocket and be able to put my binos on the top to do some glassing. I really, really like that. So again, part of the reason why I run a little bit longer back bar. Um, we have lots of different length options. So we have the 12s, finally got those in. Uh, we've been waiting for a long time. We've got 10s and we've got eights. So eights, you're probably gonna be able to go from eight inches to five inches, somewhere right around there for the, for the movement. Don't quote me on that, but it's, you can definitely go in a lot further. The 12s, obviously you can go in probably to eight inches. Uh, the tens, you can probably go into six inches. So you have a very broad range of adjustments. And again, you have that half inch, uh, you know, increase or, or being able to shorten it by a half inch. So that's very, very beneficial to you guys. Also, for people that like to play with stabilizer weights, we also have the weights for these stabilizers. So, um, feel free to come in, check them out, ask us any questions. I think that you guys are absolutely going to love this system. And I think it's going to bring a lot of versatility to your hunting uh, and, you know, bow preference for how you like to run your setup. So come by the shop, check them out.